Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's OpenTX tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about one of the more underutilized features of OpenTX, and that's checklists. Now, before your eyes roll into the back of your head, let me just have a minute. One thing I can tell you about being a licensed pilot and a military air crewman is that checklists are critical. They're critical. Checklists are used in full-scale flight all the time. As the complexity of these models increases with things like FPV and advanced control surface configurations, the use of a checklist is not a terrible idea to ensure you have a successful outcome. In today's video, I'm going to cover a couple of different approaches to checklists. One of them is going to show you an FPV checklist, another a complex airplane checklist, and third, just an informational notice so that if you have a special configuration on a plane, whenever you turn that plane on, the radio will tell you about it. Before I get into the content, I'd like to invite you to join me on Patreon if you like the work I do on the channel. There are a couple of different membership tiers, all of them with their own sets of perks and benefits. Most of them are tied to inside information about the channel, advance notice about products, and that kind of thing. So again, if you like the work I do, please consider joining me on Patreon. All right, let's get started. We'll start out in OpenTX Companion, and as you can see, I've already got a model loaded up. I'm using my SBUS test airplane, and I'm in the General Setup tab. You'll notice in that tab, there's an option called Display Checklist. We'll start by putting a check mark there, and then we'll hit the button Edit Checklist. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. I think when you're getting started with checklists, this is probably the easier way. And then I'll show you some advanced techniques at the end if you want to create some shortcuts and move through this a little quicker. So hit edit checklist and the very first thing that I did was I wrote my checklist out in a notepad file. So there's an option there called import and when I look on my desktop, there's a file called checklists. I'm just gonna click that and you can see it imported the text from that file into this window. Now I've got an FPV checklist and the complex plane checklist. We'll start off with a complex plane checklist. So all I'm gonna do is just delete the rest of this. The idea is that you can modify your checklist in one file and then import them into the radios that you want without doing a whole bunch of back and forth in OpenTX Companion, opening prior models and looking at those checklists. So that's the idea. This method just lets you have a consistent set of checklist items. Okay, and as you can see at the top, I've created a basic little checklist for a complex plane. This is not meant to be the end-all, be-all checklist, okay? You have to come up with things that matter to you. I'm just using this as an example. What I was thinking about for this example is my BAE Hawk. So that's a jet, it's a fast mover, it's not a cheap airplane, and it's got a lot of moving parts. So I, I was thinking about that plane when I built this checklist. And just like in full-scale aircraft, there are different phases of pre-flight. So I broke this one up into segments to give you an idea of possible arrangements for your checklist items. You'll notice I've got a section called pre-flight. The idea here is this is when you're on the bench and you're getting your battery out and getting ready to go fly. During the pre-flight phase, you'll want to do things like verify your battery voltage. How many of you guys have ever been at the field and you heard someone say, oh crap, I don't have any battery? I mean, let's be honest, it happens all the time. The next one is the battery voltage on your transmitter. RSSI normal. If you're feeding telemetry from the airplane, you want to verify that your RSSI is where you expect it to be for the plane. Or, you know, if you're using link quality or RQLY or some other value for radio performance, put that in here. Next, RX voltage normal. I can tell you on Fursky planes, that's the A2 values. So it's a good idea to look at your telemetry and ensure that your voltage on your receiver in the plane is normal. Gear down is an interesting one, but you can also do that in your switch confirmation section under setup. But just in case, you might want to verify your gear is down. Spoiler on's closed. This is another one that's one of my favorites because I've actually got a video on the channel where I flew the Tower Hobby Sport with my spoiler on down, and it took me like three laps to figure out what the heck was going on. I landed the plane and I moved the spoilers, and my radio said, Spoilers closed. And I was like, Son of a. I, I just. Grr. So it's not a bad idea if you've got some advanced control surface configurations to verify during pre-flight that they're where they're supposed to be. A stabilizer check. If you have a stabilizer in a complex plane and you're using say wind rejection mode or stabilized mode or automatic mode or whatever different mode you wanna call it, 
It's not a bad idea to perform a stabilizer check just to make sure the surfaces go the way they're supposed to go. If you don't want your stabilizer on, um, make sure it's off. And to make sure you don't have something like a stabilizer self-check mode enabled, because I've done that too. I, I took off with a plane and had the stabilizer self-check mode enabled and the plane did not perform the way I expected it to, I can tell you that. Finally, there's a control surface check, and you guys know if you watch any of my flight videos, I always do a control surface check, and I'm very audible about it, so I'll call out, I expect the right aileron to go up, and I have it. I expect the elevator to go down, and I have it. The reason I do that audibly is because I cannot tell you how many times I've seen somebody get on their radio and go, okay, the surfaces look good, and they, they go flying right in the ground because their ailerons are reversed. So that's why I'm very audible about my control surface checks. And then finally, dual rates. If you're on the ground and you have dual rates set up, say you're flying a jet, for example, and you, you want to make sure your lows are where they're supposed to be, check your rates. You know, Check them out, make sure that your lows are where they're supposed to be and that your highs are where they're supposed to be. And then for takeoff, you might say, well, I want my stabilizer to be on, or you might say you want it to be off, or you might say you want it to be in, I don't know, altitude hold mode, who knows? And if you're in a quad, maybe you want an acro mode or horizon mode. So the idea here is just put something in there that says, okay, my stabilizer is where I want it to be before I actually take off. And then for a plane like the jet, I like my rates to be low on takeoff, so it's a good idea to put that in as a pre-takeoff item flaps half that makes sense if you're taking off with a jet you want half flaps not full flaps not no flaps but half and and you know in your case you might want no flaps that's the key to the whole thing you have to do what makes the most sense to you in my case for the jet flaps half is where i like to be and then finally conduct a power check i'm going to show you now once we've got this set up the way we want it you can erase the label we can take that off and just leave our categories in there and we'll hit okay then the next thing you have to do is go into your synchronize SD button up here on the top. Assuming you have that set up correctly, you just hit start and you should see an update for the checklist on your radio. So now I'm gonna go over to the radio. I'll unplug it from the computer and I'm just gonna reload the model so you can see that the checklist takes effect. So reset flight, throttle not idle, and there's my checklist. Battery voltage plane, battery voltage TX, gear down, spoiler ons, takeoff. There it is. So now we have a checklist on the radio that we can go through when we're getting ready. One other thing I'll point out is when your radio is displaying your checklist, look at the LED under the power button. It stays red. So that's just another little indicator that, hey, you've got something going on here. And then when you're done with your checklist, you just hit the return button and you go into flight mode, your LED turns blue and you're ready to go. One other point I'll make about the checklist is that if you're at the field doing a little socializing, you're there with your buddies, you're chit-chatting, carrying on a little bit, having a good time, the checklist can help make sure you cover everything before you go fly. Okay, that covers a complex plane checklist. Let's take a look at what an FPV checklist might look like. So I'm going to hit edit checklist again. We're just going to erase what's there and I'm going to import again. I'm going to use my same file that I used last time, my checklist file. But this time I'm going to take out the complex plane elements of that list and I'm just going to use my FPV checklist. For the FPV checklist, there are some different things we want to take a look at. And if you're out there flying an FPV quad or an airplane, you may have a completely different point of view and that's fine. If, if you have a different set of checklist items, that's great. The whole point here is to give you ideas and to get you thinking about how you can use a checklist for your setup. For an FPV plane, obviously you want to check your voltage of your flight pack. That's always a good idea, never a bad idea. Likewise, you also want to check your battery voltage for your goggles. Last thing you want to do is if you're out flying an aircraft that doesn't have return to home, is to have your video go out on your goggles because you didn't charge your battery. That's bad. <laughs> also, you want to check your battery voltage on your TX, and you might be able to do that in your OSD on the goggles, right? So there's a couple of different ways you can accomplish that. Also verify the video in your goggles. Make sure you've got a strong video signal and that you're not on the wrong channel. I've done that too. I've gone to take off on a plane I flew a hundred times before. I took off, put my goggles on my face, and all I had was static in the screen. It's because I didn't verify video in the goggles. And somewhere before taking off, I pressed the channel button on the goggles and all I wound up with was static. If you're flying with an HD camera like a run cam, you want to make sure that it's on. Perform your stabilizer check, make sure that the modes that you expect work the way you expect them to. So if you're using the flight mode switch on the Radio Master TX-16S or the jumper, or if you're just using a three position switch to change between your modes, make sure that number one, you're changing modes, and number two, that those modes are doing what you expect them to do. 
Next is the control surface check. I already talked about that, but you know, the idea is manipulate your control surfaces, make sure they go the directions you want them to go. And if you've got pan and tilt on your camera, make sure that it works. This is another one that would be terrible to take off on goggles and find out that your pan doesn't work and that the camera's jacked all the way to one side. <laughs> That's not going to be a good day going through a transition from eyes to goggles and the eyes. You can, you can get disoriented and lose track of the plane real quick that way. Finally, for takeoff, you might say, well, I want to make sure my stabilizer's off, that I've turned on the HD camera record. I've done that too. I've gone out flying, I, everything's on, I go to take off, the plane lands, the camera's still on, but no recording. You know, it, it happens. So a checklist item will help you avoid that. If you have a DVR on your goggles or on your panel monitor, make sure that that's turned on. And then finally do a power check, run the motors up, make sure they work the way you expect them to work. So I could save this and push it to the radio and show you, but I think you guys trust me at this point to say, well, if you hit okay here and then synchronize your SD card, it's going to display on the radio, right? You got that, I hope. All right, here's the last one I wanna show you. The idea I have on this one is to put in, say a couple of stars and say SG down equals elevator and aileron mixing. Another one might be right slider down equals spoilerons enable. Another one might be left slider equals knife edge mixing. So the idea there is not necessarily to do a pre-flight checklist, but to give you an awareness that, hey, this plane has some special switches that I don't have on other planes. I can't tell you how valuable this one would be. I already know it would be because on my MX-2, for example, I've added this stuff. And if you don't fly the plane for a while, it might be a good idea to have your radio say, hey, man, you got some special things going on with your configuration with this one. I'm going to go ahead and push this one to the radio. We'll save that. We'll synchronize the card and then we'll take a look at what the radio says. Okay, so the card's synced. We'll just unplug this and now let's take a look at doing a model reset. And there you go. You can see that on the radio we've got those special flight operation warnings enabled so that when that model is loaded up, we get a little notice saying, hey, you got some special switch operations going on here. Okay, those are the basics of displaying a checklist. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of advanced techniques. With the radio reconnected, I've got access to the SD card. On the SD card, let's navigate to the models directory and scroll all the way down. And I want you to notice this little file that was created in here called SBUS test. Notice that that is the name of my model in companion and on the radio. But also notice that I used a space in my naming. I used SBUS space test. In order for this to be found by OpenTX, Notice the name OpenTX assigned to my display checklist for the SBUS test model. It put the underscore in between SBUS and test. That's important. If you don't have that underscore in and you have a space in your model name, your display checklist won't be displayed. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is that you can edit this directly from your SD card. That's the file. If you wanna edit this file directly and say take out the LS equals knife edge mixing line, you can do that by highlighting it getting rid of that and then exiting the file and saving it and now that update will occur on the radio next time you load up the model one other quick tip i'll share with you is that say i've got another model called lemon test i can go into my sd card and highlight my checklist for sbus test so let's say this is the checklist i want to duplicate for lemon test just highlight that file name hit Control c Control v and that pastes a copy of that checklist in the SD card and when I open that I'll put a note in here that says this is for lemon test we'll save that and now I'll rename it the same exact name as the model so lemon test no spaces on this one so I'll hit enter on that unplug the radio we'll select the lemon test model now I have to go in and set the display checklist option on that's right there I'll go back to the main screen and I'll just reload this model real quick and there we go you see I've got text at the bottom that says lemon test that's the checklist the file that I made for the lemon the point is you don't need to manipulate this information within companion I really showed you that just to show you where the files go how companion names them 
and how to synchronize them. So if you want to edit your checklist while you're working in Companion, now you know how, but you don't have to do it within Companion. You can edit the file directly from your file explorer, edit your text, save it, rename it, copy it. You can do all of that work directly from your file explorer. All right, that's all I've got on displaying checklists within OpenTX. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I definitely would appreciate your subscription and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're made aware of when new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. As the complexity of your model design, beep, 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 beep. Let's just start that whole little section over.